Good afternoon. My name is Judy. As a secular Franciscan, I am blessed to continue the Franciscan tradition of promoting the Lenten devotion of the Stations of the Cross. As you pray with us today, meditate on each of the stations and imagine that you are walking alongside Jesus. Ask for the courage to face your fears and sorrows with grace and offer up your suffering for those who are lonely or unloved. God bless you, and may this be a fruitful time of prayer for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord Jesus, who suffered for us, and by his paschal mystery, redeemed us, be with you all, and with your spirit. The journey that Jesus made on this day remains a symbol of Christianity in the world, as it struggles with its own crosses and the challenges of modern life. Jesus invites us to journey with him and to reflect on his sufferings as it continues in the lives of his people. In solidarity with all who suffer, let us pray that we will be open to whatever he wants us to see, hear, and understand. Amen. The First Station. Jesus is condemned to die. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Jesus is condemned unjustly by those who did not understand him and by those who were frightened of what he did and said. We continue to condemn people unjustly today. People are condemned because of the color of their skin, their gender, their beliefs, because they were born with a disability, and because they just don't conform to our way of thinking. There are also people who have been justly condemned, who have been found guilty, served their sentence, and asked for forgiveness. Does our society really forgive, or do we continue to condemn others over and over again? Jesus, what a terrible injustice to see you condemned to death. Give us the grace to see, respect, and love you and all people, both innocent and guilty. Change our hearts that we may see with new eyes those who we might otherwise condemn. While the court and priests conspire how to slant the evidence, Jesus calmly bears their eyes. As his prayer grows more intense, not my will, but yours be done. The second station. Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A cross is not just a piece of wood. It is everything that makes life difficult. There are burdens we all carry. Some are very obvious and others we take great care to hide. There are the burdens of illness, pain, old age, dependence, and caring for someone who no longer knows who we are. There are the burdens of constant fear, of loneliness, 
and of isolation. The invitation of Jesus on the cross is to hand over these burdens to him. May we see your presence, Lord, in all the burdens we carry today. May we be more aware of the crosses that others bear and make time to alleviate their burden. May your face shine on each one of us through the crosses that we bear. When the massive cross of wood bends and bruises Jesus' frame, hear him seek eternal good as he prays in the Father's name. Not my will, but yours be done. The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The crowds looked on with disdain at this man who they see as a sinner who has been condemned to die by the authorities. We judge those we see as sinners as well, without knowing their crosses, their trials, and their own crowning with thorns. Do we even suspect the part we may have played in knocking them down? What do we do to help them? Jesus, it is easy to see your image in saints. Help us to see you in the sinners too. You had a place in your heart for the divorced Samaritan woman, for Zacchaeus, the good thief, and for those who crucified you. Give us the same compassionate heart. Jesus falls beneath the weight of the cross he's forced to bear. Yet its load of sin and hate do not crush his hope and prayer. Not my will, but yours be done. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother, Mary. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The violence inflicted upon Jesus was etched in the very heart of his mother as she watched the agony of her son. We see Mary's pain in all mothers and fathers who watch their children suffer through addiction, suicide, violence, and neglect. We ask Mary to receive our pain and to bestow on us a mother's love. Jesus, we remember the gaze that rested between you and your mother. In that moment of pain, there was also a moment of deep and enduring love. Give us the courage to bring that love into the deepest recesses of our homes, to our families, to those places of fracture and disharmony in our circle of relationships. Jesus reads in Mary's eyes all the sorrow mothers bear, and he prays his friend supplies grace to strengthen her own prayer. Not my will, but yours be. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Simon, a stranger in the city, did not know Jesus, yet he was able to lend his shoulder to one whose own had given out, offering his strength to one who had nothing left taking on himself the cross which Jesus could no longer carry. Across the world we see human suffering in the faces of strangers. People we know of, but do not know, are carrying crosses, and we can give them our very selves in assistance. Lord, help us to grasp our opportunities 
to be a Simon in our world. In those times when we can help, let us have the generosity to do so. May we have the humility to accept all the Simons along our road who reach out to help us in our moments of need. We with Simon of Cyrene help the Savior bear the cross. Step by step we slowly glean what true faith and prayer will cost. Not my will, but yours be. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Veronica courageously moved out from the crowd to wipe the blood and sweat from Jesus' face. She was rewarded with the image of his face on her towel. Today, the visible face of Christ, the church, stands before us still wounded and disfigured. Disfigured by its own sins of abuse and creased with the wounds of hurt. The face of Christ calls us to look upon and heal the sins of our church and our world. Jesus, give your wounded church the courage of Veronica so that we may wash the face of Christ clean from our sin. Give us the faith to continue to build your church as a visible sign of your love. Seek the courage and the grace that Veronica displays when she wipes the bleeding face of the one who bravely prays. Not my will, but yours be done. The seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. All around us, people are overburdened by the crosses they carry. They struggle and sometimes fall. There are those who have lost their jobs and have little hope of finding another. Those who live with the prospect of unemployment and those who struggle to keep others in work. There are those who suffer because of failures in our financial, health, and political systems. But Jesus is with each of us, however we fall, and there he chooses to love and save us. Jesus, from deep within yourself, you found the courage and strength to get up once again from your fall. Give us your strength to keep going even when hope is dim. Jesus trips and falls again as he struggles through the street. Where the mob's unceasing din Mocks the prayer his lips repeat Not my will, but yours be done The eighth station Jesus speaks to the women of Jerusalem We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The women of Jerusalem wept when they saw how Jesus suffered. Jesus broke his silence for the first time by saying, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. Today we weep for children who are neglected and for women who are victimized. Weep for the young who cannot find a way in life and the old who are forgotten and dismissed. Weep for the people who starve in the shadow of abundance. Weep for the exiled and the homeless. Lord, 
Open our hearts to the suffering of all people in our world. Give us the generosity of spirit to see their pain, the courage to challenge the systems that place burdens on them, and the compassion to support them in their need. Christ directs the women's tears toward the coming judgment day when God weighs our faithless years with our willingness to pray not my will but yours be done The Ninth Station Jesus falls a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Many in the world today feel that they are at that moment of final failing, that their burden is too much to carry. They cannot bear any more. In Jesus we find hope and encouragement. His third fall reminds us that even in our moment of complete helplessness, in our own Calvary, we can stand up again. Jesus is with us and Jesus is our strength. Lord, we pray that when our strength fails, when our hope fades, and when our spirit grows weary, that we will put our unbounded trust in you. In turn, May we bring your love in a word or action of comfort to another in their moment of despair. Jesus stumbles one last time, nearly broken by the load, yet by prayer find strength to climb Calvary's final stretch of road. Not my will yours be done. The Tenth Station. Jesus is stripped of his clothing. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus continues to be stripped of his dignity and those who have had their good name taken from them and the intimate details of their lives exposed through the media. Society takes on the role of judge and jury as we devour the details. Jesus is stripped again when people are portrayed as objects in a pornographic manner in magazines, television, and the internet. Forgive us, Lord, for being an irreverent mob prying into people's lives. Forgive us for being consumers of gossip under the name of news. May we respect the dignity of others and leave judgment to God. Let us see the good in those around us and so enable them to reach their full potential. Naked to the sun and clouds and the jeers and gawking stare of the soldiers and the crowds, Christ continues with his prayer, not my will, but yours be done. The Eleventh Station Jesus is crucified. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Iron through human flesh, the flesh must yield. There is no defense. As the cross is put in place, Jesus hangs there between us and God, a blood-stained victim for love. Jesus continues to be crucified in those who starve, who are ravaged by war, and who are marginalized and abused. He bears the sins of all, and yet he says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Jesus, 
We pray for all who cannot reach out to you at this moment. We pray for the vulnerable and the victims of violence. We pray for those who inflict that violence and those who choose to be cruel. May all of us, victims and sinners, know that you are always with them. When the soldiers throw their dice, they ignore their victims' groans. Lost to them the sacrifice and the prayer that Jesus moans. Not my will, but yours be. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. As Jesus dies on the cross, he challenges us to love our enemies, to let go of hurt, to ask for forgiveness, and when we cannot find it in our hearts to forgive, to ask God to do it for us. Let us stand with those who watched and prayed in silence while Jesus breathed his last. Jesus gives one loud last cry at the moment of his death. While his prayer moves heaven's sky with his final parting breath, not my will but yours be done. The Thirteenth Station Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. In her grief, Mary remembers the words of her son. This is my body broken for you and my blood poured out for you. As she holds his lifeless body, Mary grieves with all parents who have lost children. She grieves with all who mourn loved ones, parents, siblings, family members, friends. Lord, help us to accept the partings that must come. Help us to offer our loved ones back to you as Mary offered her son. May the finality of death not oppress us. Help us to trust in you, the Lord of the living and the dead. As they take the body down and they wrap it in a sheet, in their hearts they hear the sound that his lips no more repeat. Not my will, but yours be. The fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. As his body lay in the dark of the world, all those who have loved Jesus felt empty and exhausted. There seemed no longer any sense of purpose in anything. There are times when we are overcome by the darkness of the tomb. But the answer to all our grieving and despair lies in that place. The world is now the tabernacle of God. The grain of wheat sown in darkness and in death has indeed yielded a rich harvest. Jesus did not die in vain. 
Jesus, help us to always choose life. We ask for faith when we are faced with the darkness of the tomb. May we have eyes to see the promise of new life that the darkness can hold. Quiet is the hollow cave, peace and tears and grief descend. Mourners offer at the grave what they learn from Christ their friend. Not my will, but yours be. Jesus rises in glory, victorious over death. Then the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. All our crosses, all our pain, and all our sins are healed, forgiven and transformed. The good news of the day of resurrection continues today through us and through our willingness to serve God and God's people. Lord, give us the eyes to see that a new creation has begun and a new beginning for humanity is announced in your son's resurrection. May this new beginning begin in me and each one of us. Let us pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. My friends, we have been given witness to the life-giving passion of the Lord. Let us go in peace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.